Star trackers, whether you call them tracking camera mounts, sky trackers, or any of the other names for these devices, they all do the same thing. They essentially compensate for the apparent rotation of the night sky that we see here on Earth to freeze a deep sky object or the night sky overall in its place for long exposure astrophotography. Let's talk about the first tracker here. The Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro is the most affordable sky tracker in the bunch, and it's capable of taking incredible images. All of these mounts, the way they work is that they have a small RA motor in them, right ascension, so they slowly turn with the motion of the night sky in the RA axis. So when it's on, it's slowly doing this at side reel rate. That matches the movement of the night sky. To get that to happen properly, you need to polar align them out. So the way these devices handle the polar alignment is a really important factor to consider when thinking about the overall user experience of the mount. As you can see with the Sky Tracker, it's got a built-in illuminated polar finder scope on the side here. So I just get behind it like this and adjust the base here, the altitude and azimuth base and polar align with the North Star here in the Northern Hemisphere. All of these mounts have a built-in illuminated polar finder scope and that's essential for getting set up quickly. The user experience for each one varies between each one, uh, but they all do a good job of that. So that's something that they all share. Like I said, the Sky Tracker is the most affordable one. It also has the lightest payload. This mount can only handle about six pounds worth of gear. So what you see set up here, uh, a DSLR camera, crop sensor DSLR camera, 50 millimeter lens. This is a great example of the type of setup you could have on the Sky Tracker Pro. You could put a more substantial lens on it than this one, but this works out just great. The farther you go in focal length, the more demanding it's gonna be on tracking accuracy, and then you're gonna get heavier and you're just asking too much of a little mount like this. It has an internal lithium ion battery in it, so it's rechargeable. It'll go for, I think it's two or three nights on a full charge. Just take the whole thing with you, bring it wherever you want. The mount itself is just this little box. It's mounted to the wedge base. So this is the actual mount here, and then this is the wedge base that's you know at the right altitude for my geographical location. All of the mounts, including this Sky Tracker Pro, has different speeds for solar, lunar, side reel, and half speed rates. It also has controls to, to move that RA motor with a little dial here, it's adorably simple. Also, north and south hemisphere controls, you can switch it over for that. So the Sky Tracker Pro, affordable, great, six pound payload. Setup like this is just perfect. Here is the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro. This is kind of the mid range price point and it's the same goes for usefulness and the payload capacity and what it can do. So it's a step up, it's a, actually a huge step up from the Sky Tracker Pro. You can get it with the counterweight kit, so a little weight on the bottom to balance out a heavier rig. You could put a small telescope on the Sky Guider Pro. The big thing, the reason why it's called the Sky Guider Pro is you can auto guide with this mount. So there's a little ST4 port that you can plug into a guide camera and using your computer you can auto guide this rig which just essentially lets you take even longer more accurate tracked exposures four or five minutes long without auto guiding and without the counterweight kit though it works fantastic so this one has an 11 pound payload capacity the setup you see here i've got uh, my canon t3i dslr with the rokinon 135 millimeter mid-range telephoto lens this is a perfect example of the kind of rig you could expect to run on the Sky Guider Pro without the counterweight kit. The same as the Sky Tracker, the controls for uh, the different speeds, you can slew it around using the buttons on the back. Built in lithium ion battery, rechargeable. That's so handy, so portable. Again, it's this, the mount itself is so small. So 
for all of these, you're gonna need your own tripod to mount it to. And for mounts like this, it can be a really lightweight travel carbon fiber tripod like the one you see here. The illuminated polar scope built in is fantastic. Again, the polar alignment process, you get down here and adjust the Alt-Az controls and get that bang on. You can't, I can't stress enough how important polar alignment is. Balance as well, but uh, polar alignment is critical to taking these two, three minute exposures. If you haven't noticed, I'm blocking the polar axis on the mount right now. So to polar align, I need to see right through here. The Skygutter Pro has just been sensational. It's been two and a half years now. I've had a 300 millimeter lens on here. I've had the Red Cat telescope, which you'll see next. Uh, Mid-range lenses, small lenses, the counterweight kit has just been so handy. It's probably been one of the most used mounts for astrophotography I've ever had. Can't say enough great things about the iOptron Skyguider Pro. And finally, we have the Fornax Mounts Light Track 2. Now you can clearly see that it's a totally different design than the other mounts. They also, another key change is that you need an external power source to power this device. It does not have an internal battery. So I've got it plugged in uh, to my household power right now. And I just wanted to show you the way this, this mount operates. So you can see when I speed it up here, the RA tracking that I was telling you about, it's got this arm that swings and it's a friction drive. So what this does is create better balance and a, and a very accurate tracking. It's the most accurate tracking out of the three of these mounts. It's also the most expensive by a long shot. The other thing to notice about this mount, this design, that arm does not go all the way around. So guess what happens when you get to the end of this path here for the, the arm? It actually stops and you have to return to the home position and start tracking your object again. The other two mounts will just keep going around and around until morning, basically. You can just let them track all night long. This one, you get 107 minutes of tracking, but you have to reset it to the home position. A really smart thing I came up with. I'm so proud of myself for this. I'm sure everybody already knows it, but when it reaches the end of its travel of, of the path there, all you do is release the panning head of your ball head and keep your, your telescope or your lens and camera in, the, in position, holding it, while moving the arm back and it stays in the same spot. In this case, you'd move it right back, but then you can start over again and you just haven't lost your subject. You're, you're actually holding it here and then you lock it back into place. Genius, I know, right? Again, the, the, the different slew speeds, side reel, solar, lunar, half, north and south hemisphere friendly. The best thing, my favorite thing, and it's, this really says a lot about the user experience for these mounts and how important it is. My favorite feature of this mount is this arm that swings out and you can place the polar scope wherever you want it. Now the one that came with it is a Constellation style uh, illuminated polar scope. So it's a bit of a different design than the, the clock style on the other two mounts. And I really enjoy this. I can actually polar align this mount faster than the other two because of it. So that's something to look into the, uh, the polar alignment process. There is a pole master adapter for, for this mount, just like the eye polar for the ioptron mounts that's an option for those people that are you know you're set up at home and you've got the computer out anyway i like to stay as portable as possible and that's why having to plug this mount into a 12 volt power supply is a huge deal for me because that then that removes this the portability factor of this mount when traveling the skyguider pro wins every time because of that rechargeable battery inside a lot of you have a portable battery kit and you're, you're, you're willing to do that. And you know, it's, it's just par for the course for you. But for me, I love that rechargeable internal battery. The Fornax Mounts Light Track 2 can hold 14 pounds of gear. And this setup you see here with the Red Cat 51 telescope, it's about three and a half pounds. My 60DA uh, camera on there. This is a perfect type of rig you could expect to run on the Fornax mounts like Track 2. It's just really so well made. The altitude adjustment, the FMW 200 wedge is just beautiful. The whole thing is such a nice package. This is something you can be proud to, to show off for years to come. Not that the other ones aren't, but this is a really nice mount. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. It's so different from the other star trackers that I've used in the past. I just, you know, it gave me this idea to talk about these, the different user experiences you can expect and the differences between these mounts. So I hope that was useful to you. Based on my personal experiences using these three star trackers, if you're 
on a tight budget and or you've just got a, a DSLR and lens combo that you want to use for wide angle nightscape astrophotography, the Sky Tracker Pro is more than enough. You'll be very happy with it. If you want to start getting into more deep sky using telephoto lenses or a small telescope and you want auto guiding, the Sky Guider Pro is the obvious choice and well worth the money. If you want to take it a step further than that and really want that really accurate unguided tracking accuracy and the ability to auto guide with a heavier payload, check out the Fornax Mounts Light Track 2. I think if you want the overall value, my favorite one out of these three star trackers is definitely the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro. I've just got so much use out of this little thing. It's still quite affordable considering what it can do. That built-in lithium ion battery rechargeable. It's just a great little star tracker. If you appreciated this video, please leave a like and comment and better yet, subscribe to the Astro Backyard YouTube channel. Uh, I wasn't paid to make this video or anything. None of these companies know anything about this. I've included links to each of the star trackers discussed in this video in the description for those interested. Until next time, clear skies.